interviewing Joe Diaguardi, who's our next congressman in the 20th CD, Congressional yeah. District. Uh, congressman to be, I'd like to ask you a few questions. How are you? Good to see you. Nice, nice to be here in Bronxville. Right, well, nice to have you came from Yonkers, walking the streets there. Oh, really? How was the reaction in Yonkers? Very, very good. Good. Are you facing any particular issues that you're meeting with the man on the street that you'd like to tell us about? Well, the most critical issue that most people face in this county that you hear repeated many times is uh, housing. And it ties into the deficit. And that brings us to the, I think, most critical Critical issue in the country today, and that's getting the deficit under control. Until we uh, have, uh, until we have deficits down, mm -hmm. you're not going to see uh, interest rates below 10 percent. And until you see uh, interest rates below 10 percent, you're not going to see housing, affordable housing, come back to Westchester County. Why not? What, what is your position on supporting the Reagan administration? Do you see any problems in supporting the uh, administration's policies? Not at all. I uh, differ with uh, the administration on uh, several elements of the, uh, the military package, uh, but overall I am supporting uh, the president. Yeah. We talked about the deficit. I think the, uh, the clear difference between my uh, approach to the deficit and my opponents is on how you know, we, we come to the bottom line. He feels that we should raise taxes. I think that's ludicrous in New York State. Uh, New York State in particular is the third highest taxing jurisdiction in the country. I'm on the board of the Citizens Public Expenditure Survey uh, in Albany. It's a watchdog group uh, for citizens. And we monitor expenditures in the state and the relative levels of taxation amongst the 50 states. And there's no question that the combination of the uh, real estate taxes, sales taxes, and income taxes uh, make us the third highest taxing jurisdiction, uh, jurisdiction in the country. When you add the cost of living to those factors, uh, we are number one on the misery index. So raising taxes in this state is not the answer. Raising taxes in the country, uh, which obviously will affect this state, is not the answer. And in the country, we would be nipping off one of the finest uh, economic recoveries, certainly in the last 50 years, certainly since 1949. And we can't allow that to happen. We've seen inflation come down, interest rates come down. We put 7 million people back to work. And I think we've got to give President Reagan another four years to continue this magnificent uh, economic trend. Uh, Mr. Uh, future Congressman, uh, in the we've heard a lot of uh, questions relative to support of minorities. How are you going to help the minorities in Westchester, and are there any specific programs that you see in, that you would support personally? Well, at the uh, debate uh, the other morning in Yonkers, this was the Yonkers Chamber of Commerce, I uh, issued the fifth uh, in a series of, of position papers on issues critical to uh, the county and to the country. That paper was economic development for Westchester County. I felt it was appropriate to put it out in Yonkers because Yonkers is one of the uh, jurisdictions in our county that really needs help on economic development. That the key to helping minorities and poor people is opportunity. It's jobs. It's not handouts. And I've been saying that time and time again. And I stand on my record. I've been involved working in the communities. Uh, as a young professional uh, at Arthur Anderson, uh, as a tax partner, I uh, conceived and developed uh, a bridge between the uh, Bedford-Stuyvesant Redevelopment Corporation and the private sector by creating a limited partnership with a subsidiary of that nonprofit organization to raise the private capital needed to redevelop that blighted area. This is the kind of, uh, these are the kinds of partnerships that we need in Westchester County and around the country. Uh, the perfect bridges between the public and private sector. We can't look to government to do everything. In terms of opportunity in my plan, one of the things I'm very key on is enterprise zones, urban enterprise zones. We've seen them work very well in Norwalk, Connecticut, Cleveland, Ohio, and even Baltimore, Maryland. Now they are working well, not even with the federal incentives. I would support the Camp Garcia bill, which would then bring federal incentives into urban enterprise zones, and I think that would be a, uh, a number one advantage for Yonkers and, and Mount Vernon. Good. Now, how do you differ uh, from your opponent's views in terms of uh, international affairs? Or would you talk about that foreign relations for us? Sure. I, how are you going to support the president's program? Then? Well, you know, even before we get into that, our backgrounds are very different. I probably should make a point of that. I'm a certified public accountant. I spent my entire professional life, 22 years, with a major international accounting firm. And as a partner there, a tax partner for 12 years, I had firm-wide responsibility for our government services practice and our non-for-profit practice, uh, not-for-profit organization practice. So I've got some valuable insights uh, on how to bring business-like, common-sense, logical thinking from the private sector into the public sector. And we need it today. We need strategic planning, and we need ideas that bring in the private sector to what we're doing. Uh, my opponent, on the other hand, has been an aide 
to a congressman Ottinger practically all of his life. Uh, and he has more of a bureaucratic outlook on, on what has to happen. His vision on, on what we should do is to create the major programs. It's a democratic vision, by the way. The great societies, the new deals, and then they create a bureaucracy. And by the time it gets to the people who really need it, it doesn't all get there. You're talking about heavy spend. It's heavy it's spend. Heavy spend of taxes. Yeah. Isn't that correct? No question about it. Their formula is the Mondale formula, and that is to tax, tax, spend, and spend. Uh, you know what Milton Friedman said? He said it very well. He said, uh, the government will spend anything you give it, plus anything else it, it will find, or it can find. And uh, I think that's the philosophy which best epitomizes why we don't want to give the government any more money. The issue is to look at the spending side and cut the waste. Uh, Mr. Future Congressman, would you tell us how you're going to help the uh, administration in terms of budgeting? With your background as a CPA, uh, former partner in Arthur Anderson, uh, we see you as a significant person in Washington. Would you comment in that regard, please? Well, Joe, would you believe that there are only two CPAs in Washington today, and that's 435 people in the House, 100 people in the Senate, so that's 535 people. Only two of them have been trained as professional certified public accountants, and one of them, Ron Flippo, comes out of the profession, who's on the House Ways and Means Committee at this point. A CPA can bring a valuable amount of experience and expertise to Congress today. Because we've been trained in looking at management, organization, systems, controls, planning, the very things that the public sector, the government, needs today. And without that kind of planning, we are constantly held hostage to reacting to problems as they come up. And we can, we've seen it happen. We've seen it happen in, in this county. Uh, I think Yonkers is a case in point. Uh, it seems to me that if we had more private sector involvement, more participation by the key business leaders, along with the elected officials, along with the representatives of the community, a Yonkers today would not be in the problem that it has. Uh, and that's what I would bring to Congress. I see my role, by the way, as a congressman. We've got 16 beautiful different jurisdictions in this CD. And I see myself as a catalyst, as a bridge, sitting down in each one of those CDs, uh, each one of those jurisdictions, bringing together around the table the elected officials, business leaders, and the community representatives to help them form a vision as to the way they want that community to be in three to five years. And that's really what strategic that's planning is. That's a very good idea, Joe. Hold on now. Uh, Curtis, 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 Curtis. 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 Oh, well, I thought you were okay. I'd like to introduce our future congressman. Hello, Curtis. Curtis Bruce. Nice to meet you. Curtis Bruce, he's head of Men's Republican Club in Bronxville. Would you say hello to my son, Andre, please? How you doing, Andre? Maybe I can even pick him up. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I tell you, don't do that too many times. My boy's a little older now. He's 11. Pretty tough to live Gabrielle, would you come say hello to Mr. Gordon? This is my daughter. How you doing, Gabrielle? Nice to see you. Thank you. We're pleased that you're running, and uh, tell us, if you would, what you think your chances are. How's this race looking? Well, I think the race is looking very well. I, I, yesterday I walked in Porchester, and uh, we, we, we take particular pains to visit with the households that are independent, and uh, the Democratic households that we feel would relate to my, my message. And my message is one that goes back to the very roots of our country. You know, the United States of America, is the greatest social, the greatest social experiment in the history of the world. It's only 200 years old. And the reason it is as good as it is, is that the work ethic is a very important part of it. Uh, traditional family values were a very important part of it. And what I want to bring to bear is my upbringing in that regard, plus another key ingredient, and that's fiscal responsibility. Uh, as a certified public accountant, one who's worked not only as a professional in these things, but on organizations that are non-profit. For instance, I'm on the IDA of the county. Uh, and I see firsthand what is needed, I think, in the public sector to bring a bottom line. Introducing our, our assemblyman, Gordon Burroughs, who's had 17 years in the assembly. And Gordon, I'd like you to meet Joe and Of course, you know each other. We've been bumping into each other quite often these days. He's an active campaigner. Well, me and Bronzeville are, are looking forward to both of you working together, you in Congress for our district, and you in the assembly. And uh, what issues do you see that you both will be actually coming in on together uh, in terms of taxation and uh, uh, projects uh, around to help develop uh, in development in the community? Well, the main thing I can see is actually we're very much dependent upon what happens in Congress as far as, as the state's fiscal policy is concerned. The reason why the state is finally pulling out of their fiscal problems is because down in Congress, we've got a president and a, a Republican Senate. We want like to have a, a Republican 
uh, House of Representatives to follow the type of conservative fiscal policy that Joe has been talking about, because that helps us in the state as far as our finances. When the nation as a whole does well, New York State does well. Of course. Gordon, let me ask you a question. How do you see uh, the possibility of returning some sales tax money to local authorities? Is that a possibility? As I understand it, there was a bill in the Assembly in this regard, and how do you see, what's your position in that respect? Well, of course, I, I feel that we've got to lower the tax rate in New York State. New York State is 48th, and really the most, as far as the 50 states, we are taxed most effectively of any state in the union. Uh, that's got to be changed. Uh, one thing that the Republicans are good for, and in fact they passed it the Republican Senate, is a reduction in taxes over a five-year period of $1.5 billion, and particularly in the income tax, because that is the problem we are uh, facing. No businesses want to come to New York State because of the income tax. I'd like Joe's got a, he's got the right idea. I'd, I'd like to, to comment on that, too, sure. because if you look at the census, and I made this point in many debates, uh, you see that we lost 700,000 people in the last census between 1970 and 1980, many of them young, professional, uh, working couples. We can't afford that kind of brain drain in New York State. We've also lost, as Gordon has said, many businesses. That's why I say the critical issue facing this CD, and my opponent, is on the opposite end of the extreme, uh, the spectrum for me, is taxes. He wants to raise taxes. And we've seen that his tax increase is in the nature of the Mondale tax increase. You know, in the beginning they were talking about taxing the super rich. But then we saw Mondale on his debate with uh, President Reagan, and we saw that the, the super rich now comes down to people earning $25,000 and above. What did Peter Gray say? say? Peter Gray said, listen, if you define the super rich as those people making $75,000, tax them 100% on what they earn over 75000 you know what you end up with? Enough money to run the government for seven days. So it's obvious we need to get, if you're going to get a lot of taxes, you've got to get it from the middle class. New York State cannot afford that kind of taxes. What we need is to look at the spending side, the waste that was pointed out in the Grace Commission, 2,200 recommendations totaling $424 billion. That's what we have to do. You know, spending is not a measure of compassion. The measure of compassion, the true measure, is is the money getting to the people who really need it? And I don't think it is. Assemblyman Murrows, what's the biggest uh, question that you'll have to face in the Assembly this year that's going to affect this district? Well, there are many of them. Of course, one of the most important is the energy question. Uh, these many contracts that have been uh, in effect for the last 25 years are expiring in uh, 1985 and through 1992. And then the question comes, what do we do with all of that uh, energy that, that uh, they have up in the north, is that going to be sent down at least in part to the uh, uh, lower metropolitan district? And uh, it's not a question of Republicans against Democrats so much as it's a question of how the southern uh, members of the legislature feel vis-a-vis -vis the, the northern members. Do you see a possibility of reduction of energy costs uh, by uh, greater... Uh, Transmission of energy. To yes, Southern we need that Marcy South line. We uh, need the uh, Canadian uh, power, uh, which is cheaper, no. and uh, that, along with some proper, fair, uh, equitable uh, uh, solution of the energy that we will be getting from uh, the hydroelectric power in the uh, uh, north northern part of this country, uh, state. Uh, those things have to be worked out in a fair solution, so that we don't stop the businesses that have grown prosperous up in the upper part of New York State. At, uh, uh, at our expense and vice versa. Thank you very much. I'd like to introduce our, uh, our delegate at large to the convention, Mrs. Elaine Conway. Good to see Mrs. you. Mrs. Conway's going nice to have to say a few words for you. Gordon, old friend. Oh, Glad yes. It's not yes. old friend. It's a long, <laughs> it's time, a long time friend. friend. Right. We're still young. young. Exactly, exactly. Well, we're happy to have you in Bronxville today. We're How watching. You? How do you like our new headquarters? Is it I think it's cool? like, uh, very well organized. Uh, it's got a great, great presence right here uh, in the middle of Montreal. I think it's a good Well, we're happy to be here. We're very, very fortunate that it happened to be empty and we were lucky enough to get it. And we're lucky enough to have you, too. Thank you. You're doing a great job for the Republican Party. Thank you, thank you, Joe. Well, we know you have my vote. Well, thank you very much. I know. Thanks for coming. Right.
Joe Parker. Joe, nice to see you again. Nice to be here. Joe, do you have any specific questions? Yes, I just have a question. Well, I'll just make a general remark or two, and that is that Gordon Burroughs has represented Bronxville and the town of East Chester very ably for a great many years. And Joe, we're looking forward to the same relationship with you because I think you stand for a lot of good things, and I'm very impressed by what I've read and what I've met. I've talked to you a number of times. And if you, He's a uh, great debater, too. If you give us the same type of performance for our citizens that Gordon has given us over these years, we're going to be very fortunate. And I know you're going to win in November, and we're certainly looking forward to it. And Mr. Kilborn, I think he can be proud of a slate like this. I sure am. Thank you very much, Council. Thank you very Thank much, you. Joe. You. Appreciate that. Doherty. Okay. Uh, Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This afternoon, we're honored in having with us uh, Joseph Diaguardi, who is going to be our next congressman from the 20th Congressional District. Uh, how are you, Joe? It's I'm good fine, to see you, Joe. Again. Nice to be here in Bronxville again. Thanks to have, thanks for taking your time to come here, and it's very important that we talk to you today. Yes. Joe, I'd like to know what are your views on minorities in Westchester, and how are you going to help them? Well, you know, when we talk about minorities, we're talking about basically the poor people in Westchester County and around the country, uh, people who are um, far removed uh, from access to opportunity, uh, jobs, education. And uh, we've got those uh, contradictions right here in Westchester County, which is a very affluent suburban uh, area. Uh, you don't have to go too far to see uh, you know, blight and deterioration in, in certain areas of, let's say, Mount Vernon and Yonkers and perhaps uh, Ossining, New Rochelle. And it seems to me that we've got to uh, take a proactive uh, attitude about how we help these people access opportunity. Uh, we are the great opportunity society. I think the Republican Party, if you could use one word that describes what the Republican Party is going to do for people, is to provide opportunities. Uh, I think we've got to get away from this idea of handouts. We've got to give people hand ups. People feel good about themselves when they help themselves. Now there will always be people who will need us. There are people in society that are so vulnerable that we'll have to consistently help them uh, by giving them support. And I have no problem with that. But I think over the years, we've conditioned a whole bunch of poor people to think that that's the answer for them. And it's really not, because they're not happy. And what's worse is we have welfare laws and tax laws which have worked to break up families, believe it or not. The, mm. the, the financial incentives are uh, on broken up families and not on families that come together. And what really concerns me is that we're raising now a whole generation or two of younger uh, people that are coming out of these broken up families that don't have access to the role models that one needs to uh, take their place father, in society. Father and, father and mother, right. yes. So we've got to do something about that. And my feeling is that one of the key things is jobs. Uh, How is nothing better? More jobs, Joe? Well, one thing that's uh, at the top of my list for economic development, and uh, I issued a paper, the fifth in a series of papers, a few days ago at a debate at the Yonkers Chamber of Commerce. And one of the points I made was that we must adopt the concept of urban enterprise zones. New York State is a heavily taxed state, and that applies to Westchester County. A combination of real estate taxes, sales taxes, and income taxes, personal income taxes, makes us the third highest in the country. When you add the cost of living to that, we are number one on the misery index. And that is uh, How something does that I know. How affect poor people? Well, it affects poor people because any time that there's strain and stress in an area, it just makes it that harder for the weakest chain, the weakest link in the chain, to, uh, to deal with their problems because there's not enough to go around. But the key point that I, that I was making as part of my program was urban enterprise zones. Uh, these have worked very well around the country. Uh, a recent report by Business Week shows that there are 182 of them in place right now. Uh, they're not under federal incentives because we don't have a federal incentive law. That's what I'm looking to propose. Uh, but what they've done is they've created in, in two years $450 million worth of construction and blighted neighborhoods have now kind of reached out as a hub would and uh, rebuilding is going on. And they've provided many, many jobs, especially to the disadvantaged. Now, I see a place for that concept in Yonkers and Mount Vernon and other parts of the county. Because what we need in this state, which is so heavily taxed, is tax incentive. Real estate in tax incentives, maybe some sales tax incentives if you shop in those areas, and um, certainly an income tax incentive. And uh, we don't have to look too far to see how these work. There's one in Norwalk, Connecticut, there's one in Cleveland, Ohio, and there's one in Baltimore, Maryland. So I say at the top of my list is that kind of concept, and uh, it will work. 
Joe, I really like your concepts, and I think they're uh, indicative of your uh, capability and what you're going to bring to con Congress. One of the things that you said today, and you didn't even realize it, was, you, and you set the theme for what you're going to do in Congress, and that's called the Great Opportunity Society, sure. and that's what you're going to be working on. And we're here, we here in the 20th CD are going to be supportive of you in that role, believe me. Great. I'd like to ask you another question, Mr. Congressman of the future. Thank you. Uh, what is your position on foreign policy, and how are you going to uh, support the Reagan administration in its efforts? Well, I think President Reagan has done a marvelous job on foreign policy. Uh, you have to look at the results to see where we're going, the results already. Uh, since President Reagan has been in command, the Russians have not dared to move in on one inch of foreign soil. Uh, in the Carter administration, when we had the weakening of the military, and it was a very strong weakening. I, mean, I, I understand that our uh, forces, uh, the numbers of men in the military went from three million to two million people. This was a sign to the Russians that they could then maneuver a lot more, and they walked into Afghanistan, Angola, South Yemen, and Mozambique. I'm glad you said Afghanistan. I noticed in the debates, the presidential debates, and I certainly hope this comes out on this Sunday's debate, that uh, we have really uh, not emphasized the fact that the Carter administration, the Mondale Carter administration, yes. or the Carter Mondale administration, rather, allowed the Russians to walk into Afghanistan. Don't you think that's a significant issue that the president has to emphasize? Well, I think it's a very significant issue, uh, especially uh, when you juxtapose it on what the president did in uh, Grenada. Now, here's a situation where we could have laid back and, and, and let happen what happened in Cuba. And now that we've done what we did, and rightly so, because the initial response was because of the safety of the American citizens, many students in, in Grenada. But we, we, they knew from intelligence reports what was there, and then we found out what was there. A huge airport, a base, with tremendous numbers of arms that were there ready to be launched into Central America to further destabilize that region. We have in our hemisphere Cuba, which is used as a launching pad for the Russians, the Bulgarians, to destabilize Central America. And Grenada was just one more stepping uh, stone to that end. So the president did exactly the right thing. Uh, the property and lives of our people were at stake. He moved in. And then they proved that Grenada was going to be used as a device of, of the Cubans and the Russians. What do you think of national defense? Well, the national I, defense spending. I, de I describe, uh, you know, I'm a fiscal conservative. I'm a certified public accountant. Uh, I believe in a strong defense, but I believe I don't believe in a spendthrift defense. And that's why one of my points in reducing the deficit is to review the military budget, to see what's happening there, to take out the waste. Peter Grace gave us some great examples as to what's happening just to the military budget. Let me, just give, you a, a, let me give you a couple. One, he said that it costs the Army $4 to cut a payroll check. It costs private sector $1. It costs the Veterans Administration over $140 to process an insurance claim. It costs the private sector less than $10. We have uh, 17,000 computers operated by 250,000 people, and half those computers are already obsolete, many of them used by the military. And one example that I, I get a kick out of, and I, I shouldn't because it's, it's really just terrible about the way we're managing our country, uh, our s s printers on the computers are so slow. They're not the advanced high-speed high-speed printers, that they have to start cutting Social Security checks six weeks in advance. Well, by the time the checks are ready to be issued, and some of them have been put in the mail, 8,000 people pass away, and we have to run around and pick, get those checks back. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> multiply this by the many things that happen in managing government, and you can see the tremendous amount of waste. One point on the military budget. Uh, only 6% of our expenditures, military expenditures, are competitively bid. Now, there's no business in the world that can survive on that formula. We must get it up, and my, my approach would be to support that bill of creeping capitalism where we add five percentage points a year. There'll always be a point at which you'll, you, you can't have everything competitively bid. And I would think about one-third should be sole source. But you need price competition to bring down prices. And I think that we need that in the military as well. I've got Joe, many elected, other ideas there, too. Joe, when you're elected to Congress, uh, what committees uh, would you really like to get on? Good question. Uh, the two committees that I've chosen are usually reserved for senior congressmen, but with the credentials that I bring to bear after 22 years in a major accounting firm and having been heavily involved in the community, uh, I think I've got a shot. I've already let that signal out to the key uh, congressional leaders. Number one is the House Ways and Means Committee. 
having worked with the Internal Revenue Code for 20 years, and as a tax partner with Arthur Anderson for 12 years, I feel qualified to deal with the problems of taxation. And my answer is not tax increases, it's tax reform. We do need a simple, fair approach to taxing our people. Right now we have an Internal Revenue Code that's 2,000 pages long, with 8,000 pages of regulations, and many, many rooms full of, of case law interpretation. You see yourself uh, 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 making that code simplified? Oh yes, I would support, I reviewed all the flat tax proposals, and I would lean towards the uh, Kemp-Caston version, which is a 25% flat tax, uh, with an exclusion that disappears by the time you get to 100,000, so that you've got uh, lower effective tax rates on, on the people uh, in the lower uh, areas of, of earning. And for instance, a family of four, uh, earning $14,350 wouldn't pay any tax. That's $5,000 above where it is right now. But I would allow deductions for certain things like homeowner's interest, homeowner's taxes, charitable contributions, and um, catastrophic uh, medical expenses. Very good, Joe. Thank you very much. Uh, we've been talking with the future congressman, our future congressman for, from the 20th CD, Jo Joseph Diaguardi. Uh, Joseph uh, will be our next congressman, and we Thank look you. forward to working with you closely in the 20th CD. Great. Thank, Thank you, you very Joe. much.